Gestión Zorral, the honorable member for Red Deer Lacombe. Madam Speaker, Canadians continue to have to pay Service Canada for expedited passports, despite the Minister assuring this House that this wouldn't be the case. Half the time, they're not even getting the enhanced service they're being forced to pay for. This directive first came out weeks ago, and yet it's still not being implemented. If the Minister's department doesn't respect her enough to follow her directives, how does she ever expect to clear the backlog? The Honourable Minister. Oh, well, thank you, Madam Speaker, and I'd like to thank the Honourable Member for his question. As he and as many Canadians know, after two years of travel restrictions in this pandemic, there is an unprecedented backlog of applications, both in Canada and around the world. And this has led to delays in processing and issuance. But the Minister has been adamant with the Department to address the situation and improve service, and we continue to do so on a day-to-day -day basis because the situation is not acceptable. Canadians need their documents. We will keep Canadians informed about additional measures as we take them and encourage people to plan ahead to ensure that they have passport travel plan, passports planned before booking. But I'd like to also emphasize that those who for Red Deer Lacombe. Uh, Madam Speaker, Passport Canada's narrow definition of need for expediting a passport is very troublesome. If a person has an upcoming ticket to Disney World, they can get an expedited passport. If someone is pleading to expedite their passport so they can fly to say goodbye to their dying parent or go to Europe to help their scared elderly mother escape from Ukraine, well, that isn't really an urgent need according to Passport Canada. So if the minister can't be competent, can she at least try to be compassionate? Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Families, Children and Social Development. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you for the member for his additional question. I'd like to be clear that those clients and those Canadians who are in need for humanitarian reasons or other compassionate purposes for critical illness or other emergencies to travel, whether it's the death of another person, they can obtain a passport within two business days with proof of travel or need. And this standard is being pressed upon and upheld from coast to coast to coast at every Passport Canada counter across this country. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And Gary. The chaos of Passport Canada and Service Canada is past being temporary, and it's worse than ever. The lawn chair lineups are now starting at 4 a.m., 3 a.m., 1 a.m. in many cities. And our office is handling dozens of transfer requests alone each and every day of people going to leave the country in the next day or two still haven't got their passport despite applying months ago. Each time you call, you're on a hold for a minimum of two to three hours. The chaos never had to happen in the first place. And each time the Liberals offer a remedy, we get longer lines and longer phone call delays. Can the Liberals even admit what their actual service standard is now? Or are they too afraid to tell Canadians? The Honourable uh, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Families, Children and Social Development. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, the member, for his question. Madam Speaker, since December, Service Canada and Passport, our passport agents have been preparing for what we have now. The surge is unprecedented, and we continue to work through the process. Just for an example, 600 new employees have been hired and are on the job. Another 600 employees are, are in the process of being put into place. Every counter across this country is open. We know there are long lines, and that's why Service Canada agents are going through those lines, checking their passport travel plans, making sure that seniors, those who have children, those who have work times, are being accommodated within two business days for immediate travel. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Beauce. Madam Speaker, Let's talk about these additional employees. People are waiting nine weeks for a passport, nine weeks. So if someone asks for a passport today, they might get the document mid-August if they're lucky. Now the minister says she hired 600 people and 600 more soon. Madam Speaker, we are facing a labor shortage. Businesses in my region are having trouble finding even one person. And the minister is trying to tell us that she can find 1,200 people in the blink of an eye. When will the minister take immediate action to fix this unprecedented crisis. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, the member, for his question. Madam Speaker, as I've mentioned before, 
additional processing facilities have been opened, initial staff have been hired, but this is not unprecedented just here in Canada, it's around the world. Wait times in countries like Australia, the UK and elsewhere are anywhere between 11 and 9, 9 to 11 weeks for expedited passports. Here Canadians, are, we are meeting the challenge of Canadians both in the lines and in our application process to make sure that those who have immediate travel needs are being addressed so that they can get on their way. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honourable Member for Pitt Meadows, Maple Ridge. Madam Speaker, my staff tell me that the passport backlog is an absolute horror show. People are crying and freaking out when they call us distressed about ready to lose thousands of dollars for money to spend for upcoming trips. In committee, the minister responsible for Passport Canada said, have thou no fear. MPs have a direct hotline to uh, passport services. Well, Madam Speaker, the hotline is cold. My assistant waited five hours on Wednesday to get through. Will the minister responsible acknowledge today the Liberals' absolute incompetence? The Honourable Prime Minister Secretary. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, after two years of travel restrictions, the surge is unprecedented. We know Canadians are frustrated. We know that caseworkers are frustrated, which is why we are doing everything we can. The minister continues to work with officials to look at every opportunity to improve processing times, whether it's by phone, in person, or every other application process that we can do. Madam Speaker, we continue to work with our colleagues across the way if there are immediate needs. Some of you have already reached out to me, and we continue to collaborate. Thank you. The Honourable Member of Kelowna Lake Country. Madam Speaker, a senior from my riding says, quote, we do not have a smartphone or the technical knowledge to figure it all out. It discriminates people like us, and they cite technology cost. They're talking about the Arrive Count app. Businesses are waiting months instead of weeks for deliveries from the U.S. due to vaccine mandates affecting truckers. The Liberals reducing some travel and vaccine mandates do not help either of these situations. Why are the Liberals keeping the mandatory use of the RiveCan app and keeping Canada closed? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Uh, Madam Speaker, I thank my colleague for the question, and ArriveCan has uh, been a very important tool in helping to keep Canadians safe uh, against the virus. Uh, we continue to work with our stakeholders, we continue to work with travellers to improve their experience on ArriveCan uh, by making it more accessible. I'm pleased to report to members in this chamber that compliance is up well over 90 per cent, which in the long run will make travel more efficient and, of course, will continue to improve that app as we go, as we go forward. Thank you.